Hi, it's Nally. I'm back. <laughs> oh my gosh, um, it's been such a crazy, crazy, crazy uh, two weeks. We are now January 21st. Don't even know what day we are because so much has happened. About two weeks ago, I announced that my cancer came back. I also asked you guys not to ask me any questions because everything happened so, so, so fast. Um, from me going to the emergency to get my cough checked, to then me being admitted to the hospital for a week, to then knowing I had to start chemotherapy in a span of like three days. Um, it's been nuts. But to answer your burning question, um, which is a really important question because I think a lot of people need to know, how did I end up finding out that I had cancer again, that my cancer returned, like what's the story, what happened? First of all, I took the time to write. I wrote all about it and it's in my blog um, on nally.ca. I'll put the link right below over here. So I wrote about it in detail because writing really helps me uh, clear my thoughts. So everything's kind of written like, like a book, day by day. Um, how I found out, to how I felt, to how my family reacted. I won't talk about it in detail here in this video. The only reason why I'm making this video is because I wanted to make sure that my YouTube subscribers also understand um, what happened. So I'm kind of sending you viewers to turn into readers because this one um, is an important read. But in a nutshell, it was crazy. So, so crazy. Here's what happened. Let me rewind a bit. Before January 6th, there was January 4th where it was my first day back at work at the office and I received a call from my doctor and I actually recorded this video in the hallway of my um, work <laughs> in the building because I was stressed out and this was a call from my oncologist who said he received a, uh, the results of my blood test. It is January 4th. I'm at work hiding in the hallway. I just received a call from my doctor, Panashi. Um, he has the results of my blood test that I took on December 22nd. Um, he hadn't received it when I was at the clinic because it was taking a little longer. He said he'd call me if there was anything that was wrong. Usually no news is good news, but today he called me and he said he didn't want to call me before the holidays to ruin my holidays, um, but that the result of my blood test proved that my tumor markers were slightly elevated. He said nothing too alarming, but the fact that they are suspiciously elevated, they want to do a PET scan on February 1st, which is in three weeks from now. I am freaking out because I have no idea what the PET scans are going to show or why the hell my tumor markers are elevated. I usually have clear blood test results. He didn't want to scare me and he said that it could also potentially just be like some sort of virus that causes um, inflammation which then causes the tumor markers to be elevated. I just called my um, sister-in-law who's a nurse practitioner she tried to help me understand um, I guess now all we can do is wait again and pray that uh, it has nothing to do with cancer Thursday January 5th I've had a cough I've had a cough it's been annoying but I never had like mucus or phlegm or a fever and it's something that bothered my boyfriend more than it bothered me and that day on Thursday I remember going to work and walking in the metro and feeling abnormally out of breath which is strange because I train almost every day and I flip tires at Amazon so no there's no way that walking up and down the stairs at the metro would make me um, feel out of breath and then we ended up watching a hockey game on Thursday night at home and it was a really really tight game it was the uh, juniors championship uh, America versus Canada and we lost and I don't know if I was having anxiety from the game but I was hyperventilating and I just couldn't breathe properly and that was the um, red flag where V my boyfriend not even my own decision was like 
grab your coat, let's go, we're going to the emergency. But that was at 10.30 at night, like after the game. So it was already really late. I knew we were gonna spend, what, seven to eight hours at the emergency, which we did. Long story short, at the hospital, what happened was that clinically everything was fine. Uh, again, didn't have any signs of swelling or infection, so the doctor asked that I get a blood test and an x-ray. So I did that. Uh, I thought, worst case scenario, I had like pneumonia or bronchitis. That's as far as I thought it could go. Uh, we had to therefore wait another hour for the results of the x-ray and the blood test, which we did. And so like around uh, now we're Friday, it's 7 o'clock in the morning approximately or 6.30 in the morning. I finally get called by the doctor who brings me back into the clinic and tells me that my x-ray and my blood test are perfectly fine. And I was like, damn, what? Okay, like I'm happy, ecstatic. But at the same time, I'm like, ugh, we just wasted eight hours of the emergency. <laughs> Stupid V, <me. laughs> blaming my boyfriend. But then I was like, what about my cough? Uh, can you give me some sort of antibiotic? And then the doctor was like, well, no, you don't have any signs of bacteria, so we're not giving you any antibiotics. You just need to get some over-the-counter cough medicine. I was like, okay, whatever. Left the clinic, ran to the waiting room, saw V, like almost like nanny nanny poo poo. <laughs> we came here for nothing, I told you. V, like a sweetheart, was like, whatever, I just wanted to make sure you're fine. I'm so happy to know that you're okay. We went home. We went all the way home from the hospital back to our little condo, and I didn't have my phone on me because I didn't think anyone was trying to call me at seven o'clock in the morning and I was exhausted, whatever. I didn't feel like having my phone on me, so it was in my bag. And when I got home, I took my phone out of the bag, looked at it, and there was like 13 missed calls, unknown. I knew right away it was the hospital. But before I could even call them back, they managed to reach my boyfriend's phone because the secondary number in my file is actually my home phone. So believe it or not, they called my parents' house, ugh, and looking for me, saying that I was at the hospital. So then my parents got all panicky and stressed and they gave them V's number. And then V's phone rang and it was the doctor. And the doctor said, that they made a mistake with the x-ray and i was like what do you mean he's like well we initially looked at another x-ray your old x-ray and at that this x-ray we have found some abnormalities and you need to come back to the hospital right there on that moment i knew i knew it was cancer and v was like don't worry, maybe they just made a mistake, maybe it didn't work, that's what he thought it meant, that the x-ray that I did didn't work and I had to do it again, but I knew. And I broke down and I was crying and I was like, I don't wanna go back, I don't wanna go back to the hospital, I'm like, what's in my lungs, what's in my lungs, what's in my lungs? And he's like, babe, he just like, he's like, let's go, we need to go. So we went back to the hospital and I was seen right away. The doctor sat down and he said, I'm so sorry my resident his assistant or i guess the student that was there with him um put up the wrong x-ray what happened is they put up my x-ray from 2013 that was what was up on the screen and so he looked at it and in 2013 my lungs were clear and he said knowing that you had a history of breast cancer i thought it was odd so i went back to check and apparently 10 minutes later my new x-ray that i had just done appeared and bam lungs filled with nodules everywhere. And that's what they told me. Isn't that crazy? Like minus the trauma, like aside, the trauma side of like, oh, hey, probably your cancer has come back. They sent me home, they sent me home. I was fine, they said to take cough medicine. I celebrated, I was excited. Ugh, oh, that was heartbreaking. That was truly heartbreaking. And then it was three hours, um, a three hour wait to then see my oncologist because now they transferred my case from the emergency to oncology. And I was waiting for my doctor, Benashi, who took three hours to come to see me to finally break the news.
within those three hours of waiting, I was with V, my mom, my dad, um, my brother Justin showed up in the morning and we all knew, we knew. We were trying to convince ourselves that it, it could be something else. There's, you know, there's still a small chance at something else, but I knew. And that's exactly what my doctor told me when he walked in and he was like, without hesitation, it's bad news. Uh, I'm 99.9% .9 sure that your cancer has come back. It has metastasized from your breast to your lungs. Um, you should be starting chemo in, on Monday, which was like two days from then. Um, you're gonna have to do a biopsy. Okay, let's make her schedule for our ECG, uh, CT scan. Let's get um, all the tests done to see if she can start chemo. Um, all right, so we'll need to do the biopsy. Then my mom and then my dad were like both asking questions and he could not answer because all the questions were relevant to the results of my biopsy. So he's like, I can't answer this until I have the results of the biopsy, but it's important that we start chemo just in case because he's 99.9% .9 sure. And five minutes later, he left. And I was just sitting there like, what? What is happening? I thought I was just coming here for a fucking cold. And here you are telling me I'm starting chemo in two days. And then on that day, Friday the 6th, that's when I did the ECG, I did a CT scan, I was hospitalized, I was told that the biopsy should be done over the weekend, and then there was so many things that were postponed. Um, the story um, is quite insane. I will post um, a blog post about every little detail of every little day of when I was hospitalized and all the crazy confusions and how my mind was just like, I don't even have words. Since when do I not have words? I always have words for something. But that's what happened and that's how I freaking found out. There is just so much um, that happened in these past two weeks and I'll do my best to tell you all about it um, in my blog below. So please go read it. I uh, poured my heart into it. So I think uh, it's worth the read. How am I now? You guys will receive more updates i'm finally energized energized enough to keep up this blogging vlogging and so i will be posting more videos um of how um, my first chemo went and the side effects brutal absolutely brutal not only that but the research that i've been doing i went to visit a homeopath i am in the process of getting some cannabis oil i've changed my diet drastically already um, so I will be giving you guys details on that. The Nally Show. <laughs> I finally decided that I'm still gonna release it. And despite being, again, bald and sick with cancer, I'm still gonna pursue it. So the show will go on. I will let you guys know. I'll give you a heads up when I'm gonna release the first episode. Um, I would love your support if you guys could subscribe and share. I work really hard on this show and this was my main goal this 2017. And you know me, nothing can stop me. <laughs> Not even cancer. I love you guys and I don't know what I would be if it weren't for all of you. So thank you and I will see you soon. Be patient, be kind to yourself. See you soon. I didn't even, do I have like food on my face?